So my awakening actually started very early. The story of how I came out of it, it took me a long, long time because we're, <laughs> we're so much in the lower chakras, you know, of survival. For many years, I've had the feeling that when I pray, I'm not being heard. And I get a bit like emotional. I believe we're all part of God. And if we're denying something, lying to ourselves, we're pushing it down. And this energy has to go somewhere. We actually get ill by not following our purpose because it's a natural flow. How did it first pop into your path? Hmm. I, yeah, that's an interesting question. I can walk my own path and it's only me that has the answer because that's sort of a contract with me and God and with you and God. The more we start to live truthfully, we come into that, the highest path we can walk. Alrighty. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Inspired Evolution. And we have with us today, Inspiring Our Evolution, all the way from the North, Wisdom from North podcast host, Yannicka Oynes. Oh my God, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a blast being here. And I love your intro and your, <laughs> your whatever that was. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is seriously such a pleasure having you here. I've been a big fan of your show for the longest while. There are so many questions I've been itching to ask you over the years, and now you're here. So get strapped in, man. Your podcast is a personal favorite. Many of the people that listen to our podcast also love your podcast. I would love to know, and I'm going to start in like a little pocket where potentially, you know, maybe I should bring people on the journey of what is wisdom of the North, wisdom from North, et cetera, et cetera. But you took some time off podcasting and I just kind of want to just, I just want to know. <laughs> I just want to know <laughs> what was going on. What happened there? Ah, interesting question. Right. Yeah. Because I started the podcast in 2012. So I've been doing it for a long time and I did it all the way up to 2000 and, um 20. Uh, and there's something happened. Uh, I, I think I just, um, I saw the, actually the numbers going down. That was one thing. I, I think I repeated myself a bit. I wasn't renewing what I was doing. Uh, and also I think it was something about my curiosity that didn't feel so authentic anymore that I wasn't feeling like I was super curious and um, that affected my work. And I am an actress uh, from, from the get-go. <laughs> uh, I started out as a musical theater artist and I think it's important for me to feel authentic with everything I'm doing. So I felt, okay, where is this going? I don't know where this show is going. I don't feel the vibe. I don't feel the vibe for the, from the audience anymore. Uh, so let's do something else. And I think it, there was a deeper meaning with that as well, because that was the time when I actually established uh, an online membership. Um, and I'm Norwegian, so I reached more out to Norwegian customers and we started making online courses with different teachers. So actually at that time, I created a business uh, that made it possible for me to live from what I'm doing. So I think it was a deeper meaning with me not just doing YouTube because everybody who's doing YouTube know that it's very hard to live from doing just YouTube. So I had multiple jobs, you know, next to doing YouTube and the podcast. So that actually enabled me to create a business and to live from that. And then I had a comeback, like something magical happened after I've created all these online courses and membership. And that's, you know, rolling now when we we feel like we're living on purpose. Uh, we're two people in the company. Uh, and then just something magical happened last March where I was feeling actually quite depressed. I had a feeling that, you know, I, I'm, I feel like I'm successful. I feel like I'm on purpose. I've made all these online courses with different teachers, sort of like, you know, the shift network in Mind Valley, just like much smaller company. Uh, but there was something missing. And I listened to, you know, shows like yours and Next Level Soul with Alex Ferrari. And I was like, I used to be doing that. 
And I listened to some of the interviews and they impacted me so much. I remember I was um, on Easter holiday. It was last year, actually. And I went on these long cross-country uh, skiing tours by myself. And I listened to these incredible interviews. And it, I felt it was so healing. Like I felt uh, that somehow I was a bit depressed and my vibration was just raising. I was just like, oh, this is amazing. Or the, there's really a shift in consciousness going on. And I thought the guests were so incredible or the channelers. And I was like, I used to be doing that. Why am I not doing that anymore? And what actually happened was that I, I contacted Alex Ferrari and I said, you know, I love your show. I used to be doing this myself. What about, you know, I interviewing you and maybe you want to interview me if it's interesting. And I think that was like an angel sent from heaven. Uh, he said yes immediately. We had such a great connection. And he looked at my YouTube channel and he said, <laughs> I never forget it. What did he say? Go your, <laughs> your, thumb, <laughs> your thumbnails are horrendous. They are horrendous. And I'm like, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. <laughs> He's like, you have to change all of them. And I had 400 videos there. So that took me quite a while <laughs> to change all the thumbnails. It's a prescription for the next 80 years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and we did that because I just felt that I'm going to do this. And he gave me some tip, like he updated me on what YouTube is all about now, because I was, you know, I didn't update my show, right? I hadn't done that. So I impl uh, applied everything he said, and I started making more and more videos, and the YouTube channel changed, and my curiosity got back, and I got all these wonderful guests like yourself. You've been on my show. Your show is coming very soon. And I got so inspired again. And now I love doing it. And that's next to everything I'm doing with online courses and everything. So that's the story. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for clarifying that. Because I I think oftentimes we we look, we peer in from the outside and we see people doing what we want to do. And, you know, there's just this assumption that, you know, they've got it made. You know, like everything must be so like well organized that they've got this you know and it just reminds me that we're, we're always looking at the tip of the iceberg and we don't always get to see what's going on underneath you know and I think in that story that you shared as well like your story like it was like the YouTube was working and then but then something was off and then it was like cool we pivoted to memberships and then it was like awesome like you know I really found my, my stride here and then, and then something started to come off again and it's also like the, the need for like consistent update and like evolution, like obviously I'm biased for the word evolution if you didn't already know, but you know, then like there's always like this, um, this, uh, this spontaneity, this evolution, this freshness that's required to con continuously align us back to purpose because, you know, that's, you know, it's a big, it's at the heart of my work, but you know, it's inspired by the work that you've done for, like I said, so long. The, the, the ever-changing nature of purpose, can you speak to that on the back of everything we've just discussed? Because most people, purpose is a fixed target on the wall. <laughs> I'll let you unpack that. Oh, yeah. It's a big, big topic. And what is purpose, right? And uh, it's something I often ask my guests. Do you think we all have a purpose? And I really do think we all have a purpose. And I even have webinars around it, like Awaken to Your Soul's Purpose, because I think it's so important. So I have a lot to say about this. Now, but your question was about if it's a fixed thing, which I don't think it is. I think we have multiple purposes, but we're, we sort of have an overall purpose that is really stepping into our deepest es essence um, that is with us when we uh, are born. Uh, and I think we can tap into it. Uh, if you look at a child, you can early see what the qualities and talents uh, are uh, with that child. And in, in the indigenous cultures, that is focused upon. Like that, um, that there's a, I think there's a medicine man or like the, the leader or the group is like seeing all the qualities of the child and saying, this child is going to be this and this child is going to be that. And I really think that's a great thing because in school, we usually, especially in Scandinavia, 
we sort of raise everybody equal and everybody should be just as good <laughs> in everything. And, um, yeah. and that makes losers and winners, right? Because I think we should focus on what we're good at because we're born with it. We have a certain skill set and talent. And what I did when I was young was asking questions. I was like, what is that? Why do they do it like that? Who is that in the film? I don't understand what's happening here. And it was driving my brother nuts. <laughs> he asked boys <laughs> all these questions. <laughs> and I think it's important because now I remember it because that was something I'm born with, being super curious. But I never thought that I could use it to do something valuable. And I was also very interested in spiritual things. But I, I said to myself, well, I'm not clairvoyant. I don't see angels. I don't see Raphael standing here now. I don't I'm not a medium, so I can't use it to anything. But that, again, was my limiting mind. And it was in 2012, I realized that, oh, my goodness, my curiosity is really valuable. That can be part of my purpose. So uh, I have a long story with following actually one purpose, and that was being a musical theater artist. Because from when I was seven years old, I loved singing. I was so passionate about musical theater. Sorry, just one second. I don't want to interrupt, but I didn't know until I was researching you for, to have you on the podcast that your intro music that I've been listening to forever is actually you singing. Yes. <laughs> you don't tell it anybody is. that. It doesn't, you don't tell anybody that. No, it's funny because it feels like another life. Like it feels it's like so my uplifting favorite. though. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm totally <laughs> digressing. Please. You were making a point. I totally interrupted. Sorry. Rude. But no, I that's, had to make that's, it. Sorry. Please continue. That's fine. I uh, loved musicals. Like from when I was like six, seven years old, I listened to Lim Zerabel again and again. And I told all my schoolmates about it, the whole story, like Marius, he rescues uh, um, Jean Monjean. No, it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, yeah. I told the story again and again, and uh, that is that is sort of strange for a seven-year-old to be so passionate about musical so theater, engrossed. and mm. especially like those kind of musicals. Uh, so it clearly was something that was for me, uh, and I loved singing, and I landed the role as little Cosette in Lemus Robbel in the first uh, show of Lemus Robbel in Norway, in Oslo. And there it started. I got a record deal. I was on television. I got the role of Annie in Annie, Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. All these roles, like up until I was 20 years old, I was this child star in Norway. And I thought that was what I was going to be. Like, I thought that I was going to be like a West End star or a Broadway star. And I felt everybody else around me thought that. So there were huge expectations, but most expectations on myself. But then what happens is that I lose my voice. And you can hear, I'm quite hoarse. I've always had trouble with my hoarseness. And all of a sudden, I push my voice so much because I played Rizzo in Greece and I landed another main part in Little Shop of Horrors. And when I came to rehearsals, I could hardly speak. And I went to the speech therapist and he said, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, you can't sing. You can't even speak for months. You got huge nodules on your voice. And at that time, when I heard that, it was like this curtain went down, this veil. And I was immediately like depressed from that moment. Everything lost color and energy and vibe. And I intuitively knew that my life as I knew it was over because everything I had worked upon, like, you know, I chose in school all the subjects that were, was leaning towards me going to uh, England or America. The entire path you'd carved out for yourself, yeah. Yes. And I realized I can't have a voice that doesn't work. So what happened then was that my boyfriend of five years left me. I got anxiety to speak because I didn't Christ. dare to speak. <laughs> Stop. And I lost my job, lost my no. voice. I became depressed and I hit the wall like And big your partner time. left you at the same time as well. What the action? Yeah. So that was my dark night of the soul, right? And it lasted for a long, long time. So my awakening actually started very early in my 20s. And the story of how I came out of it, 
it took me a long, long time, many, many years. It was really like a severe depression in the beginning, but I realized that I, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, opt out of here because I love my parents. They love me. Let me just survive. Like that was the deal I made with God because I thought God, uh, and at that time I wasn't that spiritually knowledgeable, like I didn't know too much about spirituality, but I felt there was God, but I felt he was punishing me because he gives me this voice and I get everything. I was a child star. Everybody knew who I was and then it's taken away and then I'm nothing. In society, I am nothing. And I thought, I had a belief that everything is about social status. Everything is about what you have. And if I don't have anything and if I don't perform, I'm worth nothing, right? So that was what the depression was telling me. You're worth nothing. You're worth nothing. And you're being punished because you did something wrong. Then I started studying spirituality, mm. fortunately. I took how did this it first message. how did it first pop into your path? Hmm. I yeah, that's an interesting question. I think I've always been curious uh, and I had nothing to do and there was this clairvoyant woman who said, you know, wow, oh, I'm taking these uh, metaphysical studies online and I I thought that if I do that maybe I'll feel that I'm doing something important, you know, I would sit at a cafe and I would study, and then I felt like people were looking at me, oh, she's doing something important. You know, because I, I really needed to have some sort of self-confidence, self-esteem, because everybody around me, my, my girlfriends, they were having kids, they were going to college, all these things. Yeah, and to those that I have struggled have... with depression, it, yeah, like depression, it can be getting oh. out of the house <laughs> is like an accomplishment. <laughs> Um, right. And in the beginning, sorry. I mm. didn't get out of the house, right? I was just staring at a wall. There was like some months I was just staring at a wall. And then I started getting out of the house and that started with me jogging. Uh, I got the energy to jog and that raised my energy, my, my vibration. And also I jogged into nature, which I think had something to do with it. Some healing, some healing forces for sure. Hey there, guys. Hopefully you're loving this conversation with Yaneke Oynes from the Wisdom from North podcast. She is nothing short of amazing. And so far, we've been discussing her spirituality, her purpose, and how she's come to it. Shortly in a moment, we're going to be diving into the crucial role that self-love plays towards personal transformation and spiritual transformation. We're about to have a really deep conversation on depression, your soul's purpose, and also living your truth and how those three things interplay and interact with each other. We're going to be talking about the current collective evolution and awakening that's currently underway. And then also what the future generation's spirituality looks like for them and the world that they're inheriting. If you are loving this podcast, please do us a massive favor and hit subscribe to the channel. It helps with everything we're trying to do in the world, which is promoting positivity, promoting peace worldwide. So please take a moment, hit subscribe. It helps with everything that we're doing. You can be part of us championing positivity in the world. Thank you so much for hitting subscribe back to today's episode i do want you to pick up on you being at the um yeah you coming to spirituality and kind of where you went from there but are there other tools that helped you through your through your depression that you can share with us you mentioned jogging and jogging into nature are there other things potentially in there for us to take away yeah it was actually uh an awareness, something started to shift because when once I went into nature and I sat on a bench and looked at water, uh, I remember the sun was shining on my cheek. And at that time, I had so much self-hatred, like I thought I was worth nothing, right? So when the sun was like touching my cheek, I remember I felt, oh, that was nice. And then there was another thought that said, oh, I thought that was nice. That means that part of me must care about myself. Oh, that means that maybe there's a part of me that actually loves me. And in that, I, I started having a feeling that I am loved by something. I am loved by parts of myself. Here I am in nature. I'm not being judged. I'm not being applauded either, like I was used to, right? Being on stage, being applauded. 
because I thought that was love. Having that applause, I thought that was love. And then I felt good just sitting there. I felt there was some sort of love. And then in the metaphysical studies, they taught about self-love. And I had never heard about that before, self-love, but I realized that I didn't have it. Mm. I understood that I had had self-confidence in my ability to sing and act, but if I didn't do that, I didn't have any value. So I didn't have any self-esteem. So I was like, okay, I need to work on my self-love. I need to feel valuable without all this stuff around me, just the, being yeah, alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I realized that that's a thing, and that's not only me who is feeling like this. So this was knowledge that started coming to me, like through the studies and also through my realization being out in nature. And with that, it was sort of like, oh my goodness, maybe everything I thought about life is wrong. Maybe there's a life after death. Maybe there's a meaning with this. Maybe I was meant to lose my voice to find something else. Maybe I am the boss of my own life. You know, all these realizations. And also, I remember Oprah Winfrey had her show at that time. And she said into the camera, you are powerful. And I remember I was like, I was sitting in my sofa, like, <laughs> she's speaking to me. And I realized, like, it, you know, she had to speak to me too. And if everybody's powerful and have a power inside, I have to have a power inside as well. And I got curious about that. So something started to grow. But it took me a long time practicing this, doing this. And then slowly but surely, I raised my vibration. I raised my self-love. I started loving myself more. And a bunch of things happened uh, with jobs and everything. I, I took, made some choices where I was just, you know, being alive, singing in Spain for like a, a year, just having fun. Uh, started just following my heart, having fun. So and then I landed this, this big point. role. So you hmm? thought it had recovered by this point, sorry, as you landed this big role? A bit more, yeah. I didn't still have a purpose. Like I felt, I don't know what to do. My voice is not good enough to be on Broadway, but it was good enough to do these like shows and um, like these tourists, tourists places in uh, Mallorca and Tenerife. And I had fun doing that. It was just a year of fun and singing and dancing. And at that time, like something had happened because I followed my heart, but I was still like, what am I going to do with my life? And then I landed this big role in the soap opera in Norway. Uh, it's not crucial to the story, but the reason I'm saying it, it, it's because all of a sudden I was like hot again in Norway. And I walked down this red carpet and I remember I was thinking, okay, so am I now more valuable just because I'm walking down a red carpet and if somebody <laughs> pulls it away, I'm not valuable anymore? You know, this is test so silly. Test your tools, test your tools, everything you've learned up until this point. Yeah, a great yes. realization, a great realization. So that was a shift. And after I finished that role, I again had nothing to do. And again, I was like, okay, what am I going to do with my life? And then I was like 30. Now I, I was 30, but I wouldn't let myself fall down into depression again. So what I did was I started to study to become a primary teacher, but that was not my passion either. So, you know, here I am trying to find my passion, my passion. I'm not finding it. It's not theater anymore because I cannot trust my voice. I don't know what to do. I, I'm not married. I don't have kids. You know, everybody, my friends have all this stuff, but then I be, I get honest with myself. So one day I sit down at, at a cafe and I speak to my father and I say, you know, I'm studying to become a primary teacher, but I'm not passionate about it. And he was like, okay, let's just, you know, just finish the studies and then you know what to do afterwards. Then you can do anything. And I agreed. I was like, I'm going to finish this because I started it. But what I really want to do, Dad, is to travel around, travel around the world and interview spiritual teachers about the big questions of life. And in that moment, there was this light bulb going off in my head. And I looked at him and I said, that's what I'm going to do. 
And this was who said that? Who said that? Who actually said that? Sorry, I was just trying to understand because I know. Yeah, was it you? Yes. I just heard myself say, "What I really want to do is to travel around the world, interviewing spiritual teachers about the big questions of life." And then I looked at him, and I'm like, "But there it is. That's what I'm going to do." But you'd never heard yourself say that before up until that point. It was just bling. <laughs> it was just Love bling, that. bling. Yeah. And, <laughs> and at that time, I had been following Lilu Mace. Maybe you heard of mm, her. She was of one of the I've first the ones. She's amazing. She's so fun. How yes. ridiculously fun. What the actual. Yeah, I love her. Sorry. Yeah. Continue. So I was so inspired by her and I realized, oh my goodness, I can do the same. And I actually wrote her. I, I wrote her and I said, you know, I would love to do the same. Is it okay? Because I felt I was so sort of like stealing her idea or like I had her, <laughs> to have her permission, right? She's all love, <laughs> by the way. I'm so inside. What did she say? Oh, she just gave me a big heart. And I was like, okay. I'll go for it. <laughs> and I if, started if she out. Could, if she would have made it a rainbow heart. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah wow. So, you know, back to the story, like that's where it all started, but it wasn't like easy piece after that. But then I, I felt that I was living my passion. I didn't earn money on it, like maybe $20 a month, <laughs> something like that. Got some donations, but I felt that there's something right here. And this is for everybody listening because purpose is something that is evolving to me, at least. It's not like, okay, there I found it and that's it. Like it is evolving because I had to grow into it. I had to grow into that role. So I started interviewing. I loved it. I loved it. People around me were like, are you not earning money? What is Janneke doing now? Like I had comments like that, but I had at that time built up so much self-love and strength and power inside that I was like, I don't care if people think this is silly stuff, talking about spirituality, you know, that it were, there were a lot of voices that were negative around me, but mm -hmm. I believe that my heart, you know, it's, I love this. I'm expanding. This has to be right because if I cannot trust myself and my body, what can I trust? And I'm so glad that I actually went through that depression because now I wouldn't let myself hear those voices that said it's all about popularity. It's all about, no, it's about living your truth. And I met all these wonderful people uh, and I, I just loved what I was doing and it took me many years to live from what I was, what I am doing. And like we've been speaking about, it constantly grows. Like there are different phases that you go through. And now it's like, what's the next step? Because your soul wants you to grow constantly. And it's more about the beingness that I'm doing something I love, that you're doing something you love than what exactly it is. And I also think part of a purpose is being of service to humanity. So that's an element that needs to be there, that your purpose has a purpose for everybody else. It is part of your truth, your essence, expressing yourself, your real essence, and also being of service. So I just wanted to add that as part of like what I believe purpose is. There is so much in there. Thank you so much for sharing that. The There is this remarkable interplay between depression and purpose i'm acutely aware of it touch wood because of i guess just my own story and challenges which we discussed on your podcast um but also your story elicits um multiple times um the interplay between i could like yeah just the i'm in depression and seeking purpose and because for some people that's not an intuitive pairing um, or not appearing in their mind that um, my depressive tendencies are potentially connected to me not being on purpose, not having passion. Can you expand upon that just a little bit? 
uh, that we cannot find our passion? Is that your question? Well, more so along the lines of like just the interplay between depression and purpose because you've gone into depression multiple times and the thing that's brought you back has been this sense of purpose and there's been points where you've realised you're not on purpose because you've been feeling depressed. Mm, right. Yeah, I think depression is an interesting thing, uh, but it is in the word that you're pressing down something. And I believe that you are pressing down uh, your essence. Like you're not expressing who you are. You're not expressing your truth. And I just want to say two words about that, that why I am so passionate about people, people following their purpose, and I have a webinar around it, uh, is because I believe we get sick from not doing that. Um, we all have this creative force and something that wants to express itself through us. I believe we're all part of God and love, that we are love. And if we're denying something, lying to ourselves, we're pushing it down. And this energy has to go somewhere. So if creativity is not being expressed, I believe it becomes destructive inside, like self-destructive. And everything is energy and energy cannot disappear. So it has to go somewhere. So if, if it's not expressed, it be can become a disease. It can become depression, anxiety, illness, ailments, like life will express that energy somehow. And usually it is destructive because your soul is knocking on the door. The soul is knocking on the door. It wants your attention. And if we are not listening, it starts to do stuff, right? And it can also be that uh, the universe speaks to you externally. So your boyfriend, girlfriend leaves you, you lose your job, for instance, to wake up because your soul wants you to wake up. So I believe we actually get ill by not following our purpose because it's a natural flow. Like if I'm not able to ask questions, I'm pushing down something within myself and I'm living a lie and the body cannot hold the lie because it knows that you're lying. So yeah, depression, then you push everything down and you're not living your truth. And once you start living your truth, something is being released and it, it can be other things than a purpose. Maybe it is, you know, you're depressed because you're in a relationship that is not good, that is not healthy, and you're pushing your own needs down and you become depressed. And when you get the power to leave the relationship, it is released. So basically, I think it's energy that is pressed down because you're not somehow living your truth. Hey, you're Inspired Tribe. I want to take a quick sec. I wanted to share something today with you that is really dear to my heart. And it's actually what keeps the entire ecosystem around the Inspired Evolution thriving my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it's basically coaching that helps you live a spiritually aligned life. I coach people from all different types of walks of life. These people are leaders and they're looking to have an incredible spiritual impact in the lives that they're leading for themselves and then also lead in alignment to their values. Now you don't have to take my word for it. Here's a few people that have also transformed through my coaching and here's what they have to say. Amrit is a fantastic coach. In a few sessions, he got to a depth that I'd only experienced before working with certain medicines. And He's gone through a lot of the struggles that you're probably facing. Then my corporate banking job wasn't really doing it. You feel like you're not making progress towards your goals. And Amrit's been a really strong, supportive figure in my journey. I'm more in control of myself. I'm kinder to myself. I actually have that vision and a purpose. I do feel like I'm a better version of myself already. Amazing energy. He was easy to talk to, which made me easy to trust him. Working with Emmerich at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning and really I was bouncing out of bed. Whenever I get off the calls with Emmerich, best money we've ever spent. <laughs> I would not recommend him because I don't want everyone to know about him and then I won't be able to book him. If he gets too busy, I won't get my turn. I would say absolutely. There's no way you can work with Amrit for a period of time without being transformed. So if you're considering him as a coach, do not hesitate because you won't be disappointed.
As you guys can see, there's a lot of people all over the world from all these different corners experiencing incredible transformations. I don't think if I can say humbly myself that there is anything quite like this somewhere else online. Most people that you know have channels that you know grow and grow and grow don't really focus on one-to-one -one offerings. I have just found that it is the most profound space where you can bring yourself in a private container and really just share what's going on for yourself. And if you want to book in for that call with me, touch base, it's www amrit.coach forward slash life. That's www.amrit.coach forward slash L-I-F-E. There is a link in the show notes below to book in that call. And yeah, if you want to take your journey further, if you want to dive in deeper and you really want to live a spiritually aligned life, if it's for you, please do check it out. And without too much further ado, once again, for your spirit, for yourself, today's podcast. We've talked about the challenges that present themselves in order for us to calibrate towards purpose. And um, yeah, <laughs> one of my questions was going to be, you know, how necessary are the challenges to consistently forward your way towards purpose? However, you've got a mark, like, like you said, you've got um, a teaching on awakening to your soul's purpose. Um, is it always the challenges um, or are there other ways to awaken to your soul's purpose as well? Are there other less right dark ways <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's actually what i say that i don't think that you have to be depressed you have to lose your job you have to lose your voice get sick and so many in my membership they have fatigue i think mm, that's the same thing like a dream they lose fatigue. all their yes they lose their energy because they're pushing down something and once they start to live more truthfully they start to recover. It's amazing. Uh, so, oh my goodness, what were you speaking? What? What uh, was? We could just person? pause there because that was profound. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was about the positive, the positive ways to awaken to your soul's purpose. But, but the fact that yeah, people are like finding energy after having woken up to their purpose when they were previously adrenally fatigued is, yeah, we can just pause end the podcast <laughs> sorry please continue <laughs> yeah no it's a big deal i've actually interviewed quite a few uh, especially women women uh, who have been you know in cults uh, like religious cults uh, things like that been the good girl and they just all of a sudden have no energy and cannot do anything and then they start the process and that's usually a spiritual process Slowly but surely, they start to listen to themselves. It takes many years, uh, but uh, many of them have written books and now they are on their recovery journey or, or have recovered already. Uh, so that's part of why it's so important. But yes, what I'm saying actually in my webinars is that you don't have to hit the wall like I did. Like you can wake up without it. I really believe so. Like, yes, we grow through what some spiritual teachers call contrast and challenges. But I also think we can grow through love and joy. And it's just the, the soul, like it's coming in, in the, way. the soul is there all the time, but the universe is knocking on the door when you are not doing what you opted into doing. Like, I think we have soul contracts where we plan our lives and we're supposed to come in with certain gifts and talents and give something to the world and also to grow from certain things. But if we astray too much, I think the, the soul wants us to come back to what the plan was. But if you are doing that, I don't think you have to, you know, meet all this contrast. So, and it is very easy in one way, <laughs> simple but not easy. Um, it's all about joy. Like if you look at David Hawkins' uh, map of consciousness, you see that joy is vibrating super high and shame and guilt is like the lowest vibrational emotions. And then we pull in our energy. But when we're in like acceptance and joy and love and enlightenment, we're expanding our energy. And I think maybe, you know, enlightenment is at the top. It's vibrating at, I don't remember maybe 700 hertz or something like that a thousand but something like thousand. that yeah something yeah something thousand. like that yeah you're right right and i'm thinking maybe you know we're not able to all get there that we become enlightened like jesus and buddha so let's go for joy because maybe you know being in love 
all the time that that's also like a very high goal but being in joy we all know what joy is because we had it when we were children then things were just joyful if you were not crying or, or you know hurting or or very hungry children are happy and we all know that feeling and that's a feeling of the heart is joy so uh, and i think actually life is a lot about having joy which we have forgotten uh because we're <laughs> we're so much in the lower chakras you know of survival but we're meant to come through the heart and move into this joy so uh, a simple tip to finding your passion is to go back to your child and look at what made me feel joyful when i was a child what came easy to me when i was a child and actually what comes easy to me now if you haven't sort of um put too much layers and push down too much of who you are in a way like because sometimes we grow into versions of ourselves that are really not true because of what life does to us but if you're sort of living uh quite authentically and feeling that you know who you are then it's easier to tap into that joy and then you can notice just when do i feel this expansive feeling is it when i'm talking about a certain thing doing a certain thing what happens to my body when am i contracting and when am i expanding and what kind of movies am i watching what kind of music am i listening to uh, what kind of uh books uh, do i read um what do i have around in my apartment in my house what kind of colors like pay attention to what you pay attention to and what you have around you and you start to understand more about who you are and it's so often we think that this has no value okay i read these kinds of books but that has no value well that was the same as i said to myself like i'm curious but that has no value and now i ended up having this show asking questions making a business out of it so you don't know you don't need to know the how you just need to know the what so start to follow that passion and the how will come and it is a, a path of sort of um what's the word uncertainty in a way because we cannot know the next step we cannot know we're improvising all our lives but there's an element of trusting the universe and trusting your inner god because you are god and trusting that if you do your job which is to follow your heart if you do that then everything will fall into place it might take time but that's that there's a reason for that too because you need to be mature enough spiritually mm. to be ready for the big purpose You mentioned God earlier and you had a bit of a relationship with him where you were like, why are you punishing me? And you mentioned God then just there again. Can you describe your relationship with God now? What's your relationship with God like now? It's much better <laughs> than it used to be. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if you were like, oh, my God, that guy. <laughs> 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 pardon me pardon me yeah pardon me. but you know you said in the beginning i don't know if you were recording but part or the reason why you're doing this podcast is, is because of pain you know that it started with pain and it did it was the same with me as well i had so much pain i needed to figure out why i'm here it didn't make sense like why am i here uh what what are we doing here like it wasn't enough for me just to get the job and get the house and get the dog but what's the purpose so that's like a deep need in me to understand this and i think now that there's a deeper reason why i don't have easy access to uh spirits on the other side uh, archangel michael and raphael and that i don't feel like i'm connecting like i feel i have a strong intuition i feel in my body if it's a no or a yes uh and i use my intuition but i'm not a medium i'm not a channeler it just does not feel easy for me when i meditate i'm not sort of feel that i 
you know, connect to a being. What I have experienced is a lot of like spiritual experiences in out of body experiences and lucid dreaming, but I haven't sort of connected to uh, God or spirits. Um, and I think that there's a deeper reason with that, because if I did, I would perhaps not be so curious. Mm. So now, you know, now that I see this red thread, that I lost my voice in order to find a deeper voice, in order to also understand other people who have been depressed, understand people who have fatigue, understand pain that people have. Now I understand it because I've been through sort of hell myself, like this big darkness. And I wouldn't have been able to understand that if I wouldn't have had that depression, depression. So now I feel, oh, God was not punishing me at all. And maybe, and probably, I have been <laughs> planning all this all along from a yeah, soul level. Preparation. Preparation. Yes. That's good. So now I feel that God is not this man anymore with a beard in the cloud. It's the universe. <laughs> and I, I feel blessed and I really feel that. It, even just with my boyfriend now, I've you know, wanted a boyfriend for such a long time. I've been single for such a long time and I, I didn't understand why I couldn't find love because I so yearned for it and I felt I was doing the work and practicing the tools, raising my vibration, doing all the stuff. But of course, I have blind spots, a lot of blind spots. But still, I felt that I had done enough to be able to, like, you know, receive love. But I was, always had this feeling that, you know, the right person will come to me and the universe or God knows who that is. And the funny thing was that when I met my boyfriend a year ago, he had been a in a relationship for 10 years and a marriage before that. So he was not available. <laughs> and he was just single for three months and then we met, right? So he wasn't available. And if we were meant to be and are meant to be, I had to wait, right? I had to wait for him. So now it just makes so much sense. My life makes so much sense to me now. So yes, I have a very good relationship to the universe. And I hope that the next time I experience something really challenging, if I do, like a life crisis, we never know, right? That I'll be able to step into that faith and understanding and look at it from a higher perspective that, oh, okay, you know, there's a deeper reason with this as well. I'm not seeing it right now, but I will. But I will let myself grieve and, of course, you know, let myself feel the feelings but I won't go into blaming something out there because I know something different now. It's not my awareness anymore to be the victim that I used to be because I know so much that I'm creating part of this and there's a deeper meaning with this. I'm hearing it's happening for you, not to you in there as well. The, um, let me see if I can tumble this question out right. Um, <laughs> the, you're espousing faith, understanding how a higher perspective and also underlying in that current is like this, this faith to have some patience um, as, you, as you go along on your journey to trust, you know, that things are going to work out. And, you know, I, I have often found that, you know, some of the best things take time, you know, even, you know, you can argue, touch wood, you know, you and I have been doing podcasting for longer than we can remember and yet I can feel it in your vibes that you're just getting started as, as, well. <laughs> as well you know in some ways there's always that vibe of like I'm just I'm still learning <laughs> I'm just getting going this is just getting good you know um every and we say that every year <laughs> um and in that, I guess the the query being maybe let's let's put some context around it someone younger listening in you know and there are so many vices, devices, challenges placed on on younger people that's vying for their attention um, and the attention spans and the ability to focus becoming shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, and then you espouse something like faith and patience. Um, you know, the, 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 the mental health challenges that present themselves for 
um, a younger generation seem uniquely positioned? Are they uniquely positioned in your opinion, or is this more of we've been through this and, you know, this is kind of what humanity's challenges and evolutions are? If the young people are uh, having like an advantage, you mean? I would say disadvantage is more Disad- in line with okay, the question. Are, right. they, are, they at, are they at a particular disadvantage given that patience yields such incredible rewards and faith yields such incredible rewards if we listen to your story and the things that you've learned um, is what I'm taking away at this particular juncture. But I feel like younger people, I don't want to sound generalist, but have less of a propensity to maintain focus and attention because of just the environments that they grow up in. Yeah, that's true. And uh, that's sort of new, you know, because uh, I don't have children and it's sort of like, oh, yeah, that that is what they're going through. And how is this going to develop? And what I've seen in the past is that uh, when things get extreme, they can sort of fall back to the other side and get extreme on the other side again. And that's sort of like the nature of humanity, that if it gets too much technical stuff, all of a sudden, and that's what we're seeing now, that people are like, oh, uh, having a forest, uh, what would you call that in English? Uh, we have an expression in Norway that um, uh, you're swimming in the forest, sort of like it's a new thing going to the forest to have a, a bath. Yeah, forest <laughs> to just bath. Be in yeah, forest, nature bath. Forest bath, yeah. right. Yeah. These new uh, concepts that are growing and going to the cabin without any internet that we see that that's a trend uh, because people want to be offline. And I think that's also like something positive that can happen, that it gets a reaction because we are (laughs) animals in a way. We need to uh, be in nature. Uh, We need to be authentic with who we are and that's being part of nature and when we're too much stimulated from a computer i think there's there's a need there that's growing to just be be without any stimuli uh so i think uh there will be a react a reaction and that that will come more and more these concepts of how to be offline uh because i think also young people feel it, that they get so much uh, rest and and more peace when they are withdrawing a bit. Uh, At the same time, I think there's a lot of positive things with computers and gaming and you have problem solving and stuff like that. And we learned a bunch about that in primary uh, or when I was studying to be a primary teacher. Uh, But yeah, I think young people are actually also searching more for spiritual uh, concepts and teachings because they are longing for something deeper. So I'm actually positive. The more we go down that road of all the tech stuff, I think that will have a reaction, which is positive again. And new things will be born out of that. And maybe young people will create more things like forest bath and stuff like that because they were overstimulated through the tech stuff. But there's something to be aware of. At the same time, you know, AI and everything that is just moving so fast and we really don't know. Uh, And I think the most important thing is spiritual development and being conscious and all these shows. That's why I love that you're doing your show. I'm doing my show. I hope there will be tons of shows, tons more shows doing this. Because I think we need to raise our awareness, raise our consciousness and being conscious around the choices we make. Because when you're consciously watching a television or consciously gaming, then I think it's okay. I mean, yeah. Um, I, was, I wasn't going to say it's positive to, you know, take a cigarette. But if you are going to smoke, then do it consciously. Um, if you are going to take that cigarette because you really, really want to, or maybe you have a habit, then do not do it with shame and blame. Do it consciously. Like I'm doing it right now because I want to do it or other things. Because when we raise our awareness around it, we're actually also saying to our mind that this is something positive I'm doing for myself instead of putting all this shame and blame that actually makes it worse. 
because we're so powerful beings. And also when you're watching the news, right? Do it consciously and notice what does it do to my body if I really start to feel uncomfortable and my body doesn't like it, maybe you can turn it off because then you're feeding the subconsciousness too much with negative things. And maybe you're too sensitive to take in all that and that comes into your dreams and is um, having an effect on your overall well-being. And that's the fact with me, like I can't just handle so much of the news because it actually draws me down and then I'm not on purpose anymore. So I have to be, be really conscious. And there are a lot of movies that I don't watch because I cannot sleep at night if I watch certain types of movies. And when we're conscious around that, I think we are in power in our lives and empowered On your channel, a lot of different people appear with lots of different opinions and it's been changing a lot over the last, well, like you said, 12 years you've been doing this now. Have you noticed an overall shift in trend? Like are things changing um, or have like, is there any shifts that you can sort of spot as like collective trends? Anything interesting happening or right. collective in your opinion? That's an interesting question. Yes, I, I do feel so. I feel it's a much more urgency now. I feel also the channelers are speaking more about that is happening right now, uh, especially when it comes to extraterrestrials, that that is coming very, like disclosure is coming very soon. Uh, they're talking about a few years, like 2026, some are saying 2028 to 20. 32 there was this woman i don't i don't remember who it was but she said that the reason why there will be more extraterrestrial um presence is because there might be a world war three coming on uh and the galactic team they had to have to intervene in some way uh even though we have free will, uh, they want to have, uh, they want to influence because they don't want that to happen. And it's not just one person saying this, it's very many channelers speaking about the same and speaking about the shift in consciousness uh, on a global level. And of course, when I started doing um, interviews, that was way before COVID and Corona, and then COVID happened. And what I think happened was that we were waking up on a massive scale all of a sudden because we had to ask ourselves questions like, am I in the right job? Am I in the right relationship? People started asking questions. So I think that, they, I mean, the spiritual teaching is sort of the same, but it just feels like now so many people are speaking about it and it's even more important that we wake up. So there's a much more intensity around uh, what's happening right now. But you know, the teachings, and that's what I also love, is pretty much the same. That is all about this inner power, it's about love, uh, and the universe is much grander than anybody could mm. ever fathom. <laughs> it's really interesting because your superpower is curiosity. And, you know, when you're saying these spiritual teachings are simple, it's kind of like I'm imagining you're polishing the the one diamond from so many different angles and yet you don't tire. <laughs> Do you, have you ever contemplated that? Like just the, cause it's, you know, like you said, the wisdom is always universal. The wisdom is simple and they're all saying the same thing. And yet your curiosity brings in another facet oh, yeah. of the diamond and another facet of the diamond and another. Is it, <laughs> that I know that expression <laughs> says it all. That is the paradox, the great paradox. And sometimes I'm very confused, I got to say, because uh, when you go deep down into it, uh, oh, one teacher talks about manifestation in this way and another talks about it in that way. And isn't that contradicting or is it? And I'm not quite sure what tool to use now. Should I do that? Should I focus on that? Or should I just let go? Uh, and there are many spiritual paradoxes and I think that's interesting. Now, I don't think that one is right and one is wrong. I've come to that it's all part of the, the grand 
uh, game of everything. And it all has a place. Um, and I love that story about, you know, that elephant where seven blind men or something like that were going to explain the elephant. And one <laughs> man was explaining, you know, the, the front part of the elephant, another like the tail, another the foot. And they all had part of the truth. And one teacher, I interviewed Jamie Price, she said, truth is truth from a perspective. And I love that because I have my truth and you have your truth, but you're seeing another perspective of the whole and I'm seeing another perspective. So we all have the truth, but we don't see the full truth. So, uh, so yeah, I... I don't know if that answered your question. I, I cannot remember. Like no, it does. Your, it does. It is the polishing of the diamond of the many different facets and the the curiosity sort of polishing the simple truth. Oh, also. right. Coming back yeah, I just want to add yeah. another thing to that. Yeah, so, uh, thank you for reminding me. Yes, and that's another um, uh, sort of perspective on all of this. It's that the more you dive deep, the deeper you go, and the more questions you get, because. In the beginning, I ask a lot of sort of 3D questions uh, that my mind can understand. And I try to put the answers in a box. Oh, that's how it works. Oh, that's how reincarnation works. So I incarnate and then I have a life and then I go back and this happens. And then I make some new choices with my masters and then I do that. That was sort of my goal in the beginning, like 12 years ago. But then when I started diving deep, that didn't make sense because there was no such thing as time and I'm part of everything and I'm a multidimensional being having lives on other planets, but how would that work and how would karma work? And oh my goodness, and I'm still trying to understand from this 3D perspective and that's my ego, right? <laughs> but I cannot understand it. <laughs> At the same time, I do feel like, oh, okay, now I'm integrating another element and another element and another element, but I still don't see the whole picture. And <laughs> I, I bet everybody's laughing now because obviously I cannot see the whole picture. It's impossible, but I still ask questions and I'm still trying to get it, even though I will never get it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, is there a, is there a, is there a, will curiosity be satisfied? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's the, it's the ever, it's the fountain of youth, as we were saying earlier. Actually, it's you know, live, mm. coming into your purpose and the health that it gives you, and you know, curiosity. And I, I truly attest to you know, there's this remarkable thing about the universe looking in on itself. Like curiosity is sacred, you know. Like why would it be looking in on itself? if it wasn't curious, like it's curious, like that's point number one, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's this really special, remarkable, remarkable thing that's going on. What's, um, what are some of the more, more irreconcilable bits? I know this is probably, I'm um, flicking you out on a tangent. Maybe there's a question you don't want to answer, but that's kind of why I want to ask. <laughs> um, what are some of the bits that you've, you've tuned into that's like, oh, that doesn't, whoa, <laughs> like, I don't really get that bit um, on your podcast recently. Well, I think that has to do with the Don't darkness. name names because then that'll get weird. Just, just concepts, please. <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah, no darkness in general. And those guests that go there and go, uh, but I am curious about it. So I have put it out, like I haven't edited it uh, out, but uh, topics around manipulation, how we are manipulated, the dark forces, uh, stuff like that. I think it's difficult. Um, and I always want to end at a positive note, like an empowered note, like, okay, even though this might exist, how can we empower ourselves? And they usually end up speaking about that these dark forces don't have power over us if we are in our powered state of mind. Again, why that is very important, why it's important that we live our purpose, uh, not in the victimhood. You know, it's all tied together uh, because the more we are in our victim state, the more we are not in contact with ourselves, we are sort of, yeah, 
uh, victims for all kinds of other forces that can influence us with their negativity. And a lot of times I think our negativity is not our own even. Uh, because if you are weak in your energy, we are s- so much, uh, what is that word? S- um, open to receive that kind susceptible. of susceptible. When we are under influence, alcohol, stuff like that, we are much more susceptible for these energies as well. Uh, and I think that that's going on. Uh, and yes, I think it's hard you know, to hear about afterlife experiences that are not of the positive note, even though a lot of them are, are saying that, you know, this was just in my mind, it was me creating it. But others are saying that they're also this astral plane where you can linger for a while, you know, the, the concept of ghosts and all that. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like, well, that is maybe just part of the soul, that, that the main part of your soul is actually on the other side. Uh, and then there are some people who are saying, you know, there's just one life, which I like, I don't believe in. Uh, okay, I shouldn't make, <laughs> make names or <laughs> mention names, but there's the a names. teaching around that, <laughs> that I usually, that I recently interviewed. Uh, and I don't, I don't believe that, that it's just one life and that's it. Uh, that does not make sense to me, but there's an afterlife and we plan the afterlife here. It depends on how good you are and stuff like that. Um, And obviously, I don't interview a lot of religious people on my channel because I think that's very, it often uh, gets very dogmatic. And uh, I feel that religion needs spirituality, but spirituality does not need religion. And that there's a lot of beautiful things in religion, but when it gets too dogmatic, I I don't think it's very uh, inclusive. So, so yeah, I, I, I've just made a, a choice to uh, not focus too much on the darkness because I do believe that the universal laws come in here as well. The more you focus on something, the more it grows. So I'll rather focus on the light and be aware that, yes, there's a darkness. I'm not ignorant of it. But, okay, where do I want to put my focus? That's on empowerment. And I feel like that's um, – thank you so much for sharing that. I know it was a bit of a – a trapdoor question to ask you and <laughs> sent you down the trapdoor. Thank you um, for trusting me and honoring us with such a gracious response. I um I think that 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 work applies even to our personal selves as well, right? Like, because you know we find there is so much like you know that there is absolutely room and space, and there's a necessity to do our shadow work. Um, and yet you can spend your whole life doing that. Um you know, and then there's all these, like you said at the beginning, it's like, where's the joy? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, what makes you expand? Like, you know, take some time, focus on that. Like, like you said, you know, people are recovering from things like adrenal fatigue, potentially touch wood through stuff like focusing on their light and the things that actually lighten them up. And, you know, one of the quotes recently I had on my podcast was, uh, the light is here to try and save the dark from itself. <laughs> you know? And I, I, I loved that quote. Then I, I just share yeah. that because I can see it in your face. You're resonating with it too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, just uh, it's, it's, it's happening on a personal level as well. And I, and I think that's probably something I wanted to just sort of remark upon because following your, your show for the, for the longest time, it's the, the kind of as within, so without conversation becomes ever present. But the, the engineer in me just was always, is always remarking upon the scale at which the as within, so without is kind of happening, you know, it's, you know, there's these collective potentially forces happening when it's like, oh yeah, and that's, that's just little old me and his little shadow aspect, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really remarkable witnessing the, the sort of mirror effect of everything. It, yeah. I'm not even sure if it's just a question or I'm just asking you to remark upon something with me. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I, I really believe that that's the way it is. Uh, that's just a belief. I don't know. Uh, but that we are God and God is experiencing itself. And so everything that is within is without, and that the whole universe is actually inside of me, that we are everything, uh, which is so imp- weird or difficult to, to feel or understand. Uh, but I've had a few mystical experiences where uh, when I was meditating like a lot back in the days where I've experienced that I'm huge. And I think 
even though you haven't had an experience of it, which is really good to have because then you sort of know, and I would strive to get that actually. I'm of the opinion that if you get your own experience of a mystical experience, then it's not a belief anymore. It's a knowing. So I think it's very good with experiences. And I think meditation can get you there, maybe. Uh, but uh, back to the um, uh, within, without, just having the awareness of that can also help you. Like just imagine you're going with your day and you're having these negative thoughts about yourself and this I'm not enough and I'm alone and separated. Just having the awareness that I'm actually God. This is God experiencing how it is to feel separated. This is how it is to feel I'm not enough. But that's not the truth. I know intellectually that's not the truth. That actually helps me. But the thing is that I forget about it in my everyday life because we're on default, because we are um, uh, sort of more controlled by our reptile brain, you know, from way back when. So that's sort of a natural state. And that's why we have to train ourselves to be aware, train ourselves to um, have a focus that is much more beneficial. Train ourselves not to do what actually feels natural. And I spoke about this with a channeler, don't remember when. And we concluded sort of together with that so we can't just be ourselves. Because if I am myself all the time, I would think negatively a lot. I would be destructive uh, because that's the negative bias in our minds. Because the mind or the brain is looking for danger all the time. Survival. We're wired to do that. Survival. So we have to have to train ourselves to trust, train ourselves to be in love, to be in joy, to go out and relax and not be like that all the time. So I find that interesting. Hey there, guys. Quick question I'd love to ask from you guys. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to find out more about your awareness around this conversation between depression versus expression and your soul's purpose trying to express through in your life. What's your awareness in and around this conversation? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Back to today's episode. Uh, and again, I don't remember where I was going oh, with it's this. A, it's okay. <laughs> I, at this particular juncture, I think it's worth me asking a question about your memberships. Like, because you, you mentioned it earlier that you build a, mm. a membership thing. We're talking about training. Um, I'd love to find out more about the membership. Maybe some people that are tuning in are curious about it too. What, what, what goes on inside the cult? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry, Ooh. sorry. I couldn't help myself. Oh. I'm too comfortable with you. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You've just yeah. met me, but I've been listening to your podcast forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very far from a cult. Uh, it's all about finding your path, actually. And that's wisdom. That, well, that's what wisdom from North is all about, is finding your North Star. Right? Yeah, tell us about that as logo. well while you're at it. Because I've always, like, that was, yeah. I wanted to know what, because you are living in the North. Yeah. Um, being originally from Scandinavia and, you know, but then also what does North, the North Star, yeah, tell us more about that. I'd love to hear about that and the membership. Yeah. Yeah, again, I'm not going to complicate it and be, you know, very artsy about it. It's very simple. Like I got the name Wisdom from North in my mind uh, the same day that I had that epiphany that this is what I'm going to do in 2012. The name Wisdom from North just came down like that and I just trusted it. And then we were looking for a logo and we found that star and I realized, you know, the North Star is a symbol uh, for people coming home. And I thought that was perfect, like coming home to yourself. And I also think there, there's something magical about the North and the uh, Northern Lights uh, and that there's a portal here. But I don't also want to say, oh, it's all happening in the North and uh, that that's a better thing than the South or the West or the East. So it's no, just, I'm in it feels Australia. like, hello, you left right. me behind. <laughs> 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 Had to set up my own podcast. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, no, so it's sort of just that it's uh, coming, you know, since I'm Norwegian, it's coming through uh, me being Norwegian and finding your, your way home. And back to Wisdom for North membership, that actually grew out of me feeling that, okay, I'm inspiring people with all these interviews, 
but am I really transforming people's lives? And that was a passion I had. How can I really help people transform and live these enriched, empowered lives that I feel like I'm starting to live uh, with all these tools that I've learned? And that's more than just conversations. It's actually doing the work. And like we were saying, you have to do the work because it doesn't come natural to us. A natural bias is negative. And we have to change this and start to cultivate this, uh, this, this soul aspect of us, to be honest. And I look at it that, like this, that I'm actually bringing more of my soul into my body. I'm integrating more of my soul quality in my human body. So I'm living more from my soul than my ego. It's very natural for me to say, no, I want that coffee. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I have, you know, train myself to think that we're one. You know, the more you train yourself to see the other person as yourself, then you start, that becomes your new normal. And that's practice. So I started this membership because I realized, and that was another epiphany, that I knew all these amazing spiritual teachers that I've interviewed. So I thought, okay, why? what if I make a portal where they are um, teaching classes, like sort of a spiritual uh, Netflix? <laughs> and I invited a few of those teachers that I really resonated with, uh, that I felt this hard connection with. And today it has grown into around 50 different master classes within all these different teachings, like how to learn how to channel, uh, with Dave, Daniel Scranton ha has a class that's coming in May or Josie Grouse, like how to secretly, like five secret steps to, to uh, communicate with angels, like all these different masterclasses within different topics that teaches you the work. And just that class with Josie Grouse, like I was editing it and I, I was like feeling that this is so meaningful. Like now I have concrete tools on how I can communicate with angels. And it's something I really believe in. Like I had an interview with her and after she gave me a reading where she said things that were going to happen that year. And it was just mind blowing. She said, if I may, I think it's okay that I, that, that I share. Uh, but she said that there was going to be a person that was going to be sick, like very close to me, but it was going to be okay. And she said what kind of disease it was and all these detail, details. And I was like, hmm, who is that going to be? And one month after, uh, one very close person to me uh, got this disease and had a surgery and it went okay. Like all the things she said was going to happen, happened. <laughs> so that gives, that verifies for me that this is a real deal. And she sees angels and angels are real, which is saying in the interview, and when people are doing that masterclass, they can have their own experience. And that is so important for me that, again, that they get their own experience because then it doesn't just become a belief. Like, I believe this, I believe that. It becomes a knowing. And it's the same as when I had my out-of-body experiences. That's a whole other story, but I've been speaking a lot about it because it was so important for me to have my own experience that I wasn't just, you know, speaking about that. Oh, there is life after death. Well, do you know? No, I just believe it really hard. No, I started having all these out-of-body experiences where I knew that, oh, okay, now I know I exist outside my body. It's not a belief anymore. It's a knowing. And that's what I want in my membership. And we have like, you know, teachers like Dr. Eben Alexander and Dr. Sue Mortar. And it's a beautiful community for those who want to dive deeper. And it just felt so good for me to be able to offer that like real tools from amazing teachers so that feels like part of my passion so you guys are so welcome to check in and join and people can stay as long as they want mm, sounds super nourishing i have to say <laughs> um you. you mentioned your out-of-body experience and you touched on it earlier as well we're here can you tell us a little bit more about your out-of-body experience and what happened and what you learned sure this was way back when. It was actually before I started Wisdom from North. And funnily, I lost my voice again. I talked a little bit about that. I was in Spain uh, having fun, singing, 
uh, for tourists on this hotel, like tourist hotel. And all of a sudden I strained myself too much. So I lost my voice and I couldn't uh, perform. So they had to perform uh, without me a couple of weeks. And then I had nothing to do, right? So what I did was I found this course, Astral Travel and Dreams. And they told me in the course that if you are doing these techniques, you will get out of your body and you will have lucid dreams. And I trusted that. And I went all in. Like I isolated myself. I meditated three times a day. I practiced concentration and concentrating my mind, which is a huge part of it. Uh, practiced being observant wherever I went, like on the external, what am I hearing? What am I seeing? What am I feeling? What is going on inside? And it was, <laughs> it, it's something I'm not doing now because it takes a lot of energy uh, to be doing it. But I had the time and I had the opportunity and it started with lucid dreams and lucid dreams for those who are new to it, it is to wake up in a dream. So you go to sleep at night and all of a sudden you feel like you wake up, like you become conscious within the dream. That means that you can navigate the dream. So let's say we're in a dream right now. All of a sudden I become like, oh my goodness, we're actually dreaming. And that means that I can do whatever I want. I can fly through the window. I can fly to the pyramids. I can do whatever. I think there's there are some limits, I think, but hardly any. Uh, I've interviewed a few teachers about this. Um, Charlie Morley is a wonderful teacher within lucid dreaming. So what I also did when I was lucid was that I experienced my body uh, as different. So I, I uh, pulled my finger and it got long. For instance, my hands were different. I felt I had this blue, <laughs> this blue body. And when I'm saying this, it's not just a feeling. Like this was like I'm sitting here right now. Like it was so real. Like I was in another dimension, being fully conscious, being in another body, being Janneke. Now, where that is, what it means, there's so many questions around it. Like we can say it's in the astral world, blah, blah, blah. But still, what is the astral world? Is it in one big mind? What is it? Is it different than out-of-body experiences? Some say yes, some say no. I think it's the same, but that that's technicalities. But then I had a very like life-changing experience. I started practicing other techniques, mantras, uh, and visualizations. And they're very like sacred, these like mantras and stuff like that. It, was, it felt very sacred. And it does also feel sacred when you start to have these experiences. You're like, oh my goodness, there's so much mysticism that we don't know about. So I did these techniques. I was laying on my um, bed and I was focusing my mind on this mantra and I was visualizing. And all of a sudden I come into what is called this vibrational state. That means that you start to feel this vibration uh, all over your body, but it's wrong to see your body because you're just feeling you're vibrating everywhere. <laughs> And you don't know what's vibrating because you don't feel your body as solid anymore. But I had learned about this. So I knew, okay, that can happen. So I didn't become afraid. And that's very important because if you do become afraid, you just snap back into you your body. You shut it off. You shut it you off. You shut yeah. it off. So I was there and then I realized, okay, now is the time where I need to get out of my body with my spirit self or with my other self, whatever it is. <laughs> So I rolled out. There are several ways of doing this. <laughs> you can go up there. You can go down through your legs. I rolled <laughs> over out of my body. And all of a sudden, I find, find myself standing next to my bed. And I was thinking, oh, my freaking God. I'm standing next to my body. This is this is. Uh, surreal can't even you know explain it and I knew that okay my body's there and I started peeking like slowly but I was so afraid to be you know shocked of how I looked <laughs> so I didn't dare <laughs> just said saw that was like something laying there 
<laughs> it's so surreal. And then I was like, okay, I know that I can fly through walls and everything. So I went through my wall and I knew that, okay, my mind can say, oh, you can't go through a wall, but I knew I could go through a wall. So I was like, go through the wall, go through the wall. <laughs> and I went through the wall and then I flew out into the universe or my thought was, if I get out of my body, I want to meet God. Now, this was way back when, right? When I had another concept of God and I felt that God is in heaven. So I flew out of my window, up, 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 <laughs> up in the sky to meet God. And before that, actually, I went down to the street, I remember. Uh, I flew down, I think, first. Uh, and I um, saw people were walking around, but they didn't react to me. Uh, and that was, I felt that was weird. But then I was like, okay, yeah, I was going to meet God. So I flew up in the wind, uh, up in the sky. And there I was sort of hovering in the sky. And I, it felt so real. That's my point. Like, I felt that this is me. I'm here. This is real. Uh, my body is something else. And I'm in another reality. But my goal was to meet God. So I went up there in the sky and I didn't see God, but for many years, I've had the feeling that when I pray, I'm not being heard always because this was sort of, uh, I was out of the depression, but I still didn't feel empowered. I hadn't started Wisdom from North and I felt when there were big disasters in the world, like I remember the tsunami, for instance. I felt I couldn't speak to God because then I would take up space for those who needed God. Do you, do you get that feeling that I'm not worthy of God? Yeah, I don't think you're alone in that in that feeling at all. Um, right. Yeah. And that okay. was I had trim, forgotten. Trim your prayer, keep that. it concise, because everyone else is lined up behind you, sort of thing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, touch wood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I didn't see any God, but all of a sudden I, I flew sort of, I was attracted to a, an object that was in the sky. And when I came closer, it was this cluster of telephones, like old telephones that were clustered together like that. Are you and looking for a connection? <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm a right. dad. I can't help with the dad jokes. Um, I'll shut up. Yeah, but, you know, at that time I, I didn't think, in that i i don't know I, I didn't get it at that time i was like what is this <laughs> sorry i'm so, i'm so sorry and all these voices came through all these telephones and i was like there was a lot of noise so people were calling and what i realized when i started listening was that it was prayers like it was prayers coming out of all these telephones and oh, i get a bit like emotional um and what I also had the sense of was that they were all picked up. Like they were picked up, all these callings, all these prayers. And in that moment, I felt that, oh my God, it's all these prayers. They are picked up and they are heard. And also my own prayer is picked up and being heard. And that was profound. Like that was what I got. That was the message. And I think, like, I didn't get it at that time. I had to wake up and I contemplated on it and I realized, oh my God, like, God sees me. And that's the message that I needed to receive was that all our prayers are heard. And it was shown in such a, like, a practical, <laughs> funny way that, you know, speaks to me in a way. <laughs> I'm very, like, rational and practical. <laughs> So that was wow. beautiful. And after that, I felt this hallelujah feeling when, when I actually woke up, I was like, oh my God, I've been out of my body. This exists. And I wanted to run out on the street and I saw people and I was like, I just want to tell you that it's, this is all a game and an illusion and you're much more than you think. But I was like, I cannot do that. <laughs> But I called my mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you came back into your body when you had the, um, you woke up in your body when you had the visceral download and the realization of the insight that you sort of left again with God's help.
pretty quickly after there was another thing uh, happening i went into sort of there was a waiting room that appeared all of a sudden that i went into i never quite knew what it was some channelers have been speaking about this waiting room uh but i haven't sort of figured that part out yet so there's another part that i quite didn't understand uh but that was like the the message i i was left with and the most strong out of body experience i've had i want to touch on something in there because it can be pretty interesting the way you've dialogued that um i think there's some wisdom to be shun a light on in there it's like yeah i came to meet this waiting room and I, I have no insights about the waiting room just to be clear um but also the fact that you said you're not w- aware of what that was about yet um i think that speaks volumes um and I guess I'll unpack what it's sort of saying to me just to sort of have you remark upon it further. Oftentimes we have experiences and we think those experiences are isolated moments, but when we start to get a bit quantum and we start to unpack that time is an illusion, something may have happened to me there and I had an experience there, but I might still be integrating and unraveling that for time to come, you know, and you, like you said, you know, I saw the wedding room, but I still don't know what that means yet. And yet this experience happened to you over couple of decades ago now you know so yeah I think there's something to be said about the way you're perceiving time and life and teachings in the way you describe that I think that's interesting it's all part of the mysticism and I think that the mysticism is there and we're not necessarily supposed to understand everything that it, to us, it seems like, is there a meaning with it? But I always, always think there is a meaning with it. And again, back to that spiritual matureness. So that is what is so exciting. And I've had several experiences after that. And I've learned not to um, be too attached to, I have to understand what that means, because maybe I'm not there where I can understand. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that, because there's a lot of wisdom in there. Obviously, being a follower for your podcast, I can't let you go today without asking something about the soul print. <laughs> and I know we're slowly coming to a close, but I love the way you use the word soul print. I've stolen it from you. <laughs> it's, it's, it means a lot to me. Um, yeah, it's just such a beautiful way to describe just, you know, yeah, maybe you can describe what soul print means to you. Well, I do think that, like I've been speaking about today, that we plan our lives before we come here. Uh, And I think that's a great relief that everything that's happening to us have a purpose and that we have these certain qualities and skills and uh, uniqueness that we come into this life with, uh, this personality that we are planning in great detail what we're actually going to do uh, our parents that we're going to live with, our bodies, what kind of body I'm going to have, that I'm going to be born with a voice that I can sing with, but that had this horse quality. So that is going to be a challenge. And I can take on that challenge if I want. Um, I, I also think we have this free will and this destiny uh, that goes hand in hand in a way, in a mysterious way. So, yeah, I think we're incredibly unique actually which uh, special uh which i find uh a relief in that i can walk my own path and it's only me that has the answer because that's sort of a contract with me and god and with you and god and the the more we start to live truthfully we come into that the highest path we can walk and i think there are many paths we can walk on this planet Uh, that can derail from uh, the original plan, which is not judged upon, even though your soul wants to try to get you to the original plan. But it's all learning, but there is a higher plan there that you planned out and that you can walk uh, and that it always turns out great in the end. I really believe that, that there's, um, that it always turns out well, like it will, can take time, but you know, just with meeting my boyfriend, it took me so many years before I actually met him. Patience has also been a topic in my life, like a soul theme. And I believe we have many soul themes that we're here to master. And when you master them, when I master my impatience, then things started to come to me. 
when I learned, you know, I think one of my soul themes is to learn about patience, that things came late in my life. Uh, and so when you master that, it starts coming to you. So yeah, I think we all have a unique soul print and that's sort of sacred, the sacred thing that you agreed upon with the universe. And it's sort of the, the goal is to find that, that uniqueness with yourself and actually fall in love with it yourself and really fall in love with you because you're really just falling in love with God and the universe. How do I not end the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I was interviewing someone recently. They said the, the the hallmark of a good interviewer is he knows when when he's done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ironically, I've kept talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so make of that what you will. Oh, Yanagi, I'm going to put a link to your membership in the show notes below. I'll put a link to your YouTube channel, obviously, in the show notes below. For those that haven't checked it out, I'd be surprised if they haven't, but the link will be in the show notes below. Um, man, I, I do want to, I'm conscious of the time. I've got some quick couple of rapid fire questions before I let you go here today. What is your definition of living a good life? Oh, being true to yourself. I love that. How do you define God? All that is. So good. What is the ultimate purpose of life? I do not know. <laughs> and you're totally okay with it. The curiosity is so good. Um, and ultimately, is there anything else left that you want to share today? Follow your joy. It's so simple in a way and so difficult. Take a leap of faith and you're worth it. You're so worth it. There's a deeper meaning with your whole life. There's a red thread. If you start to look at your life, you know, you see that there's a purpose with everything that happens. There's a grand orchestration there. You are so unique and so valuable and so important to the whole full picture and the more you start to do what you love and what you want and what you desire and what you feel it's just your uniqueness the more you will transform people around you you're so entitled to do that that's actually why you're here is to live your authentic truth yeah, <laughs> thank you thank you so much for obviously today's podcast and conversation thank you so much for having me on your show that was so humbling to be a part of it was like i made it <laughs> it's such a <laughs> gift and honestly thank you so much for your show for just the light you've continued to like carry from the north for all of us to point us to our north star to help our soul prints along dude I'm so grateful for your work, for how you show up, what you show up for, why you show up for it, and then also just the being that continues to show up, whether she's in her body or out of it. <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> Sister Bear, thank you so much for doing this here with us today. Appreciate you so much. Well, I just want to say right back at you, thank you so much for doing what you're doing. It's amazing, and I hope your show is growing massively because your energy helps people like i i'm just so high my vibe is so high right now and i think that's the most important thing it's you on your show helping people raise your their vibration because of actually your high vibration so thank you so much amrit that is so humbling to receive <laughs> i'm going to be integrating that one for years to come <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your blessings Hey, you're Inspired Tribe. I want to take a quick sec. I wanted to share something today with you that is really dear to my heart. And it's actually what keeps the entire ecosystem around the Inspired Evolution thriving, my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it's basically coaching that helps you live a spiritually aligned life. I coach people from all different types of walks of life. These people are leaders and they're looking to have an incredible spiritual impact in the lives that they're leading for themselves and then also lead in alignment to their values. Now you don't have to take my word for it. Here's a few people that have also transformed through my coaching and here's what they have to say. 
Amrit is a fantastic coach. In a few sessions, he got to a depth that I'd only experienced before working with certain medicines. He's gone through a lot of the struggles that you're probably facing. Then my corporate banking job wasn't really doing it. You feel like you're not making progress towards your goals. And Amrit's been a really strong, supportive figure in my journey. I'm more in control of myself. I'm kinder to myself. I actually have that vision and a purpose. I do feel like I'm a better version of myself already. Amazing energy. He was easy to talk to, which made me easy to trust him. Working with Amrit at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning and really I was bouncing out of bed. Whenever I get off the calls with Amrit, best money we've ever spent. <laughs> I would not recommend him because I don't want everyone to know about him and then I won't be able to book him. If he gets too busy, I won't get my turn. I would say absolutely. There's no way you can work with Amrit for a period of time without being transformed. So if you're considering him as a coach, do not hesitate because you won't be disappointed. As you guys can see, there's a lot of people all over the world from all these different corners experiencing incredible transformations. I don't think if I can say humbly myself that there is anything quite like this somewhere else online. Most people that you know have channels that you know grow and grow and grow don't really focus on one-to-one -one offerings. I have just found that it is the most profound space where you can bring yourself in a private container and really just share what's going on for yourself. And if you want to book in for that call with me, touch base, it's www amrit.coach forward slash life. That's www.amrit.coach forward slash L-I-F-E. There is a link in the show notes below to book in that call. And yeah, if you want to take your journey further, if you want to dive in deeper and you really want to live a spiritually aligned life, if it's for you, please do check it out. And without too much further ado, once again, for your spirit, for yourself, today's podcast. Hey there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to the end of another episode. Now, as always, the invitation, please take a moment to like this video, comment below, and please, please, please subscribe to the channel. It helps so much more than we can say. Promoting positivity is what we're all about, and you can help us on this mission through hitting subscribe. Now, on screen, if you love this conversation with Nikki, you're going to find another amazing conversation with Alex Ferrari from the Next Level Soul podcast, another dear podcast host championing positivity in the world you can click on that episode here and there are another couple of episodes on screen as well for you to dive deeper into your journey with the inspired evolution i'll see you in the next one